Esta é provavelmente a melhor compilação de lutas de ringue que tu já viste. O meu convidado, Jerry Trimble, é uma lenda do kickboxing. Foi duas vezes campeão do mundo. Tornou-se depois ator e duplo de cinema, participou em vários filmes e lutou contra algumas das maiores estrelas de Hollywood. Hoje faz palestras motivacionais para os mais jovens, fonte de inspiração para melhorarem um pouco a cada dia. Prepara-te para dicas fantásticas de como sermos melhores em tudo o que fazemos. Em exclusivo para as dicas do Salgueiro, apresento-te Jerry, the Golden Boy, Trimble. Let me just ask my director if everything is okay with the sound and stuff, you know, because we had a little tef technical difficulty like uh, 10 minutes ago, but I think we're, I think we're good now. So good deal, man. Oh, he's good telling deal. me, he's telling me everything is okay. I can't believe this. Everything is okay. I mean, this is perfect, man. This is your positivity. You just brought the positivity in. Yeah. Yeah. So. You, yes. You're always talking, Jerry, you're, let, let me start from the get-go asking you some tips. Okay. You're always talking about brain development and brain training yes. and meditation. What are some of the yes. tips that you could give our listeners and our viewers? You know, like step one, what could they do in their everyday lives to help them get focused, for example? Uh, start off with what you eat, brain foods, uh, brain okay. foods like broccoli, mm. um, uh, Greens, green leafy vegetables, walnuts, blueberries, uh, avocado, coconut oil. Start off with changing your diet and eating more brain friendly foods. Okay. Foods that are you know good good for the brain. Meditation. I meditate twice a day. Yesterday I actually meditated uh, three times, but most of the time twice a day. You know when you're meditating, make sure you got some maybe Bose headphones so they're they're noise cancellation headphones. And you just bang. You know, people go, oh, I meditate. I do art. Uh, you know what? Uh, no, when you do art, you do art. That that They say it's a form of meditation, but I'm talking about the silent meditation. Okay. Man, silent meditation, dude. That's that's the shit. I mean, when you're just silent, your brain waves and everything, is, and there's no thoughts. Okay. There's a okay. guy uh, uh, for some brain training exercises and tips that I learned from, Jim Quick. I don't know if you heard of Jim Quick. Quick. K W I K, oh. Jim. Quick. No, no. Yeah, he's got he uh, he's got some amazing brain training exercises, uh, things to do to remember to remember your lines, things to do to strengthen your brain. Mm. Um, you know, uh, uh, visualization. I do visualization every day. I do affirmations every day. You know, this is the most important asset we have. And if we if we this thing conks out, we're You're screwed, hey, man. I, I'm actually uh, reading a book right now called How to, uh, in, in Portuguese, it's something like How to Invest in Your Brain. And they say stuff Ooh. like, there's a lot of stuff that you know how to do or you know some patterns when you when it comes to you working out or, or doing some physical training. But when it comes to brain yeah. training, people don't know what to do, don't know where the fuck to begin. They, so it's like, it, it, yeah, yeah. Would you say that for meditation, would you go like like uh, looking at something for a very long time or just uh, uh, repeating a word or a pattern like one, one? Would that stuff help or or that's uh, the cliches? Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they you know, everybody's got their own method, their own way to do something. And for me, it's the silent meditation. I've been meditating for about nine shit before I came to Vancouver, but probably for about 10 years now. Wow. And I've tried all kinds of different types of meditation, uh, guided meditation, you know, um, visualizing, visualization meditation. But what has worked for me is the silent meditation. Mm -hmm. I guess it's it, it would be compar comparable to uh, transcendental meditation, TM, okay. yeah, which okay. is, you know, you get a mantra, but 
I don't have a mantra. And I was going to go and do the transcendental meditation. And I was watching a Russell Simmons video uh -huh. and I was like, fuck, man, I don't I, No, I'm not going to pay someone to teach me something that should be free. That's what Russell Simmons says. He says, you shouldn't have to go out and have to pay someone to teach you. He says, all you got to do is get some headphones, boom, put it on and, and breathe and focus on your breath. And that's it. But exercise, you mentioned exercise. Exercise is one of the top things for brain, for, for uh, developing the brain and keeping the brain strong. Lots of water. Uh, this shit right here, man, is the bomb. <laughs> what? Uh, supplements. Me. Oh. Supplements. I. This is the Rolls Royce of supplements for the brain. It's Qualia. a bit pricey. Ne yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's called a neurotropic. Have you heard of neurotropics? Oh, um, if you, yes, I've heard of the term, but I'm not sure. Is okay. it like a complex of uh, uh, vitamins and minerals that will help you with with brain function? Is that it? With your br yeah brain function, that's exactly what it is. And mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, a lot of people in Vancouver, I'm like, have you heard? You know what neurotropics are? They're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I've tried a lot of different neurotropics, and you know, being an actor and be, you know, I mean, back in the '80s, man. <laughs> I, I did so many drugs. I'm trying to reverse the damage that I did with oh, my brain. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, and, 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 you know, fighting in the ring, you know, some brain trauma, I guess, but being an actor, having to remember lines and working with kids and remembering, you know, 45 minute monologues when I'm going out to do a talk, I've tried a lot of different neurotropics and this one is the shit. What, what's it's what, called? What, by what Qualia. are some what are some of the ingredients or some of the nutrients that it has just so that people know uh, a yeah. little bit of the of the compounds? Well, you mind? Uh, it's the premium neurotropic. It, it's um, I mean, it's got DHE, DHA, ginkgo, below, ginkgo uh, velvet bean, organic coffee berry, cognizant, a lot of shit that's just mainly oh, okay. for the brain. L, okay, okay. L -cital, L carnitine, artichoke hearts. I mean, it's got yeah. a lot of shit in it. Oh, okay. But it okay. works the moment that you take it. You take Seven on an empty stomach upon a rising, and boom, you feel it immediately. And that was the key. I went, oh, my God, I feel good. I feel really <laughs> good. I feel I feel like my focus went up, boom, a couple of notches. <laughs> and uh, and the cleaner the cleaner you get, you know, the, the, the better everything works, the better you're able to, to absorb it. But I know this is a plug for quality. I don't make any money off no, of it, no. but I love this shit. Don't worry, it's man. really don't good worry. stuff, man. We're all yeah. about plugging. Even if we're not getting paid, we're all about plugging when yeah. stuff works well, yeah, and when, yeah. when there are good products in the market. Uh, so yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of people, <clears throat> you, you talk about the, the good habits in terms of the food, and a lot of the people, uh, they we sometimes, especially when we have a lot of work, some days that we have a lot of physical and mental work we feel like okay we deserve some mcdonald's right now you know so oh, if, if people only <laughs> change that little bit of their lives that comes along with everything the food it's it's so important yeah. to f f fuel ourselves good fuel, um, man. you know what I mean, it's actually it's, it's, it's it's actually kind of funny. Sorry to interrupt you. It's actually kind of funny looking no, at you because when I when I was uh, when I was younger, you scared the living <laughs> crap out of me. You know why? Because the, <laughs> the first movie I ever saw of you was Breathing Fire. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and you were the breathing fire. I mean, you were oh, so God. mean in that movie. It was like, oh man, I can't believe that. <laughs> So now I'm talking was, to you. Were actually quite a nice guy. I'm. I'm, I'm uh, glad. Thanks. I'm glad you, you thanks, changed, man. Jerry. You changed. <laughs> I changed quite. You know, it's funny. I I did a podcast a while ago, about a week ago, week and a half ago, with Johnny Davis, and um, he said, "Yeah, man." He goes, "You know what I have to say? Back in the day when you were fighting, man." He goes, "You were somewhat of an asshole." I said, "Oh God, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry." You know, I mean, we all got our things, uh, you know. But yeah, I uh, I, I yeah, I have changed. Yeah, I no. I like to consider myself a peaceful warrior. Yeah, man. How so? How? Uh, the, well, obviously, we got to introduce you to to our crowd. Some of the yeah. people might not might not be in touch yeah. with your history and uh, what you did for the martial arts and for the movies. So, where did it yeah. all begin in terms of the martial arts? What striked you? What sparked uh, your your flame? That guy behind you, over your uh, right shoulder, in a poster. <laughs> Who, Bruce, Bruce Lee? Lee? That guy? Really? What? No, I can't believe that. that. No. You got to be the first uh, person to say that. <laughs> I know, I know. Wow, funny, man, most, really? Most people, yeah, I, yeah. I was, uh, I was bullied as a kid. I was bullied as a kid. Um, uh, I only had a handful of friends, and there was one day that I, I you know, ran away from home at 13 years old, and uh, going through the streets, um, I went to see if you know there was a movie theater that had Planet of the Apes and uh, Chinese Connection, 
Oh. And I snuck into the Chinese connection and I saw Bruce Lee. Man, when he jumped on that screen, some shit happened inside of me. Oh, Ooh, man. That was, uh, it was pretty cool. So I went home and asked my dad. I was like, hey, can I join karate? And he's like, no, man, no. You quitted everything you started. And uh, so I went to the magazine store and bought every martial arts magazine I could buy. And uh, went home and I put it all, put the magazines all over the floor. And man, I was, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but I was trying. <laughs> yeah. So, so Bruce yeah. Lee is, is the main fuel for most people. Uh, now tell me something. Uh, yeah. We, we, I know that some of the titles are translated <clears throat> or that they were different in certain parts of the globe. So when you say Chinese Connection, yeah. are you talking about Big Boss or Fist of Fury? Uh, the one in Thailand right. Big, or the uh, one in the, in the Japanese dojo? The Japanese dojo. That oh, was Big Boss, yeah. right? Was that yeah. Big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I, I think in some part of the uh, some parts of the world, it's uh, Big Boss is the the one in okay. Thailand, but I yes. guess it's called Chinese Connection in some other parts yeah. of the globe. I mean, the the Asian yeah. um, the Asian market and the the American market were were kind of different. So sometimes Fist of Fury yeah. is one, and Chinese Connection is is another. So it was the one yeah, where he kicks all the Japanese guys. Okay, I, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where he where, where he walks in and, he, and the sign says no no Chinese allowed, no chi no dogs and no Chinese allowed, and he jumps up with one foot, he kicks the sign, yeah. takes the other foot, smashes it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was that just was the there. movie, man. It changed my life. I was just there at that door, at that uh, big uh, garden door where he kicks that that oh, uh, really? uh, that sign like two years ago. Yeah, I cried oh, so hard, shit. man, because I saw. Oh my god! I, I began training martial arts. I began training uh, wushu when I was nine years old because I saw a movie. I'm younger, so I can't really say that the yeah. first movie that I saw was a Bruce Lee movie, but it was a movie on Bruce Lee called Dragon, the okay. Bruce Lee Story with Jason Ooh, Scott Lee. Great, great movie. Yeah, I was nine years Love old, it. and my grandmother took me to see that movie, so I guess we ran out of oh. cartoons or something. So I went out, I went over there to the, to the movie theater, and we saw that. It was like, I was crazy. I wanted to be like Bruce Lee, and then so I that saw... Was your that was your that was your boom. That was your uh, spark, yeah. right? Yeah. Br oh, yeah. Thank you, it, man. Yeah, Bruce Lee. Whoa. What, what do you call it? Plot twist, plot turn. That was my plot turn. How you how you say that it, right? Your, plot twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plot yeah, twist. Yeah. Plot twist. Yeah. Plot twist. Yeah, yeah. Plot yeah. point. Plot point. Yeah. Plot point. Yeah. Plot that was point. my plot go. point. That, that was my first. That was my first plot point too. Man. Chinese man. connection, man. Love so it. I, love it. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because uh, when I spoke to, to Keith Cook, uh, yeah, you know, are, yeah are, I saw the interview friends? last night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good. great guy. Love Keith. When I spoke to Keith Cook, he said that he started learning from a book as well. And guess what? You started learning from books and magazines. And guess what? I started learning. I, I don't want to compare myself yeah. with, with you guys, obviously. No, 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 but, no. Come on, man. You, yeah, yeah. You're but, badass, but, dude. But I, but I started from a book called like the practical manual for Kung Fu because my Very parents cool. would not enroll me right away. They wanted me to, they wanted to see how much into it I was, you know? That, so, same here. My dad, man, they didn't want to, they, they were like, no, but after two months of upstairs in the attic in my bedroom, just jumping up and down and boom. And they're like, okay, I guess he's serious. So they called my <laughs> uncle up. My uncle took me down to the school and uh, boom, enrolled me. I yeah. was like, yes, God, changed God. everything. Stood up to the bully that always with me, stood up to him for the first time, never was bullied again. Man, that's that's yeah. such a story, man. That's such a story. Yeah. And uh, you started with uh, Taekwondo, <laughs> am I right? Ta taekwondo, yes. Got into Taekwondo. Yep. Yeah. And taekwondo, you had like... I started, I started, what's that? No, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to ask yeah. you if you had like a crazy, I, I heard in an interview that you had like a crazy world record or, or of, of, of getting your black belt in, in the, I mean, you got it in the shortest amount of yeah. time because you were so involved, right? I was six days a week, man. I got it. In eight, I got my first of your black belt in 18 months, a, wow. a year and a half. It took me. And it was like every day by, we, we were about two miles, about two, a little over two miles from the karate school. I would walk to the school and at night my dad would pick me up and I would hang at the school. Even when, when I wasn't taking class, I would watch the other classes, watch the other students. And I would sometimes take two or three classes if I could, if I was the rank enough to take the class. So I just dove into it, man. You know, what you put in, you get out, you know, and yeah. I put everything in. <laughs> and when did you decide cool. to, when did you decide to start competing? Uh, because you competed in, in full contact kickboxing, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I started in uh, point point tournaments, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I lost like my first three tournaments. And you know, I was talking to my instructor. I'm like, "What the hell? What's going on?" He goes, "Well, if you keep doing what you're doing, he goes, you'll keep getting the same results. You got to spar with people that are better than you, people that are taller than you, people that are higher ranked than you." And I started going to going around to, to, to the stu- higher ranks in my stu- in my class and stuff, saying, "Hey, after class, you want to spar?" I was going up to black belts, and I was like a green belt at the time. And then after that. I fought my fourth tournament and uh, I took first place and I was like, oh my God. And then I was addicted to sparring. I loved sparring. Yeah. Sparred every, I sparred anyone and every, whenever I could. It was, uh, it was pretty cool. And the skip, my mom, yeah, she's like, I can't believe it. You got all these trophies. I had probably 50, 60 trophies and they're, I have no idea where they're at. They, I, when I left, from Kentucky to Atlanta, or, or from Atlanta to California, I didn't have any place to put my trophies, so I gave them to a friend of mine to put them in their in his family's farm, and they got all broken. and And I'm like, "Where's my trophies, man?" He's like, "Jerry, oh. man, we just there. We sorry, we had to throw them out because we needed space, and we and I couldn't get a hold of you." And I was like, "But my mom's like, I can't believe it, all these trophies." And I went. You know what, Mom? I said, it's up here, though. It's up here. And it's it's, it's really about the trophies, but you know, it would be nice to have them. But, eh, yeah. But, yeah, you know so what? it was cool. And then I got into it. And after that, I saw Richard Jackson and uh, Howard Jackson on ESPN fighting. This was in 79. And yeah. I went, I think I can beat these guys. I think I can I, I think I can become world champion. And then, uh, yeah, I fought for the – I fought my first – Fight was uh, for the Kentucky State uh, Kickboxing Championship, and I TKO'd uh, the guy in, in the fourth round and gave him a black eye busted eardrum and four, uh, four stitches above the left eye. I would I would write down all the injuries I gave to my opponents every time I fought. It was sick. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, were you were you that methodical? Like uh, like the you, you wrote down the injuries like like in a journal? I, yeah, I, I did a journal of, of all my fighting stuff of how many kicks I threw that night in training, what I would do, to, you know, uh, how many we would do kicking rounds, and in the kicking rounds we would time it to see how many kicks we can kick in that round. We got up sometimes 400, 500 kicks. Wow. And I was bang 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 bang. It was like. It was so cool, but I, I recorded all that and and recorded. It was a diary. It was like a journal diary of everything that I did. Yeah, it was wow. pretty cool. Wow, well, that's why I recommend I- everyone journal. Everyone write in journals. Communication with yourself is one of the most important things. Write in a journal. You write in a journal. You have a journal. Yes, yes I have a journal. Yeah, uh, but it's it's yeah. mostly like uh, it, it's it's topics of stuff that yeah. I need to do and goals. It's not really there a diary. It's not yeah. a diary. It's not a diary. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit cool. lazy to write my day or write what happened during that day, but I'm starting to yeah. get a little more, a little bit more methodical in my approach. Because once you don't write the goals, they they yeah. they vanish. It's like yeah. uh, some some someone said, someone very wise said that you should never use your head as a filing cabinet. I I totally agree, because I'm in a creative area yeah. where I'm always trying to get get new ideas for yeah. videos. And you know what? Yeah. Once when you're a stuntman and a personal trainer like myself, you get ideas every day. For example, yeah. of people asking you stuff like, uh, "Oh, how do I squat?" <laughs> or "What am I doing wrong in the squat? Where am I doing wrong in this uh, in this workout?" So you're always getting ideas of how to to reach people and give them tools. Yep. So yeah, I, I write down everything. Even if I'm in the shower or if I'm, you know, in a locker room <laughs> or if I'm driving, I, I've got, I gotta go, I gotta write this because I know I'm gonna yeah. forget about it. Yeah, if you yeah. gotta get it, if you don't get it out of your head into the, on the paper, into the world and give it life, they'll stay up there. That's, I tell the kids, I'm like, you guys write, you, you guys have goals? They're like, yeah. I said, you guys write your goals down? They're like, no. I said, well, if you don't write them down, you don't get them out of your head. Where are they going to stay? They're going to stay in your head. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with them. Yeah. Don't they, use your head as a filing head. Yeah, Only man. for remembering things. 
that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's good to practice, but uh, not with serious things. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you're really going to lose, yeah. lose your ideas. And nowadays, I feel yeah. like, uh, you know, with, with so much competition, you always got to bring new stuff and new stuff, even even if it's not new stuff or new truths. You know, yeah. some, some of the things we always say are cliche. We know that. But it's like yeah. our way of saying or our angle is always different. And yeah, um, yeah. I, let me get to the to, to your motivational speaking a little a little later on yeah, because cool, uh, cool. right now I really want to continue with your your history because I'm really fascinated. So, how many times were you a world champion when you started full contact uh, kickboxing? Two times. I was the PKA champion and the PKC champion. So, wow. but before that, I won the Kentucky state title, the Georgia state title, the Southeast title, the U.S. title, and then uh, PKA and PKC champion. I defended it for four years. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, just uh, after that, went to California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know those were the the harsh times, right? Those were the Ooh, yeah the tough times in your career where you look back and it's like, oh, I screwed up there, right? Would you, uh, would yeah, you mind sharing job, a little yeah. bit of what happened? Yeah, I uh, uh, once I – the closer I got to becoming world champion, it was um, – a lot of temp there was more temptations. I mean, I never paid for anything. Everyone would take care of me. It was like, hey, golden boy, hey, we're going out tonight, man. Everything's on me. I'd go out and never pay for anything. And and there were so many times I'm like, guys, I got a I got a fight coming up, man. I got I got to train. I can't a train. But then you know, after I became world champion, it just I moved in with um, a buddy of mine. We're we're still very close friends and. Uh, he's, um, his name's Glenn Hughes. He's, he, uh, he played in deep purple and black, black Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he's, he, I think he's about probably 35 years sober now. Uh, but we, we moved in together and man, we were out of control. We were partying seven days a week. I, I moved in with him as his bodyguard and his personal trainer. And I ended up, we ended up being best friends and party buddies. And then I had a drug overdose fucking drug overdose Whoa. days later. Yeah, it was, uh, I did, man, it was, I was, I was, I was so out of control. And, um, my girlfriend had taken my dog, my Pomeranian to Lake Okeechobee, Florida. And I, um, told Glenn, I said, man, I said, I got to get out of town or I'm going to die. I said, I'm going to Florida to get my gizmo. That's what his name was. And, uh, yeah, so I hitchhiked to, uh, uh Lake Okeechobee, Florida, Took me 23 hours, and I had an epiphany on the Florida Turnpike, which they call Alligator Alley because of infested with alligators. And it was me on a freaking you know stretch of highway. There was nobody in sight, and I was just walking and praying to God. And man, I had an epiphany. And it was to get the hell out of Dodge, get away from the people I was around, go to California, and get into the movies. I went back. I got my dog. Went back to L.A. or went back to Atlanta. And um, sold everything I own, man. And uh, me and my buddy George, who, man, my buddy George, who moved there with me, he had a uh, drug overdose of heroin and died. Um, oh, uh, man. Yeah. yeah, he was three days away from signing a multi-million dollar record deal with Capitol Records and freaking just said, oh, one last hurrah. And I said, dude, are you sure? this?" And I got my shit together. But he went to California and got into the bad shit. And... Man, three days from signing the record deal, he freaking OD. I was like, "What?" Oh yeah. man, so man. Uh, that's, yeah. that's so crazy. But, yeah, because because yeah, it's crazy, man. You know, nowadays, obviously, you you told that story in some 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 interviews, and I watched a lot of interviews uh, from you, uh, being being a fan, and and uh, I mean, it's. it's People sometimes are, you know, it's, it's, we are very quick to pull the trigger on celebrities or people who yeah. just found fame. Oh, they should have been more disciplined. Oh, if, if it were me, I would, yeah. I would say no. I mean, it, yeah, fuck off. I mean, it's <laughs> not, it's not that easy. Yeah, I go. mean, you were, yeah. you, you, you lived with one of the Black Sabbath members. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I mean, t tell me a few stories. I mean, without, you know, forgetting about obviously oh, the, the bad stuff, that must have been crazy. I mean, I want to know a few stuff, a few things. Where did you go? Yeah, Where, yeah. What did you do? We hit, we hit, the, we hit, we, we, you know, it was weird because being a bullied, insecure, fearful kid that had no friends, I was, I was like, man, I'm the world champion. I, I mean, I had carte blanche any club I would go to, restaurants. I never had to wait in line. 
and we go out and it, you know somebody would mess with Glenn because you know and and then the bouncers would say take him outside you want to take him outside Jerry and I'm like fuck yeah we go outside <laughs> and next thing you know there'd be a big crowd of people around and I'd hit oh man this is crazy I had my mom gave me this ring um, for my birthday mm -hmm. uh, JT and it was in diamonds and yeah. and I, don't know, I mean I don't want to sound like I'm bragging but. but that, Okay, well, every time I got into a fight, it was either me or them. So I would take the ring off and put it on my first finger. And uh, so every time I would get into a fight, they're going to know that they got messed, you know, with the wrong guy. And I would never start a fight. I was always bullied. So if anyone were to bully me or my friends, I would stick up for, you know, and I was 140 pounds. People would be like, hey, Trimble, hey, man, this guy, man, I owe him money. And I said, where is he? Where is he? Okay, boom. They take it over there. And if I couldn't talk the guy out, boom, it's like outside. And uh, it, it was crazy. It was stupid. Can I, if I could go back and change it all, would I? Yes. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been of out of control and I wouldn't. Yeah, it's just, but I did. And, and we were fighting in clubs, you know, sometimes two, three times a week. I'd get, I'd be banned from one club and I'd go in the club that says, ah, oh, man, sorry, Jerry. You got two more weeks, brother. I'm like, oh, you kidding me? Uh, yeah. They said, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck it. Come on in, man. Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, crazy times. And it was a lot of fighting, a lot of anger, and a lot of ego. You know, ego, man. Ego. Oh, it's going to be the downfall of mankind. But 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 you yeah. being but you being as positive as you are, and obviously ta talking about the 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 downfall that this was, and the getting yeah. getting it onto your head that this was this moment was. Uh, what do you feel came out of this that was positive for you uh, in the long run? You know, it's funny because there's times where, well, recently, you know, maybe a, about a two years ago, I would beat myself up going fuck i would i could be so much farther than i am right now and i've done a lot i mean i'm i'm grateful i'm blessed that everything i've done and everything i continue to do now but without those stories and without that turmoil that i went through i wouldn't be able to share it with the kids and my wife's like honey you know what if you didn't go through that you wouldn't be able to share it with the kids and i went you're right you're right so I embraced my past and I thank everyone that bullied and everyone that criticized me and everyone that thank you for, yeah. you know, for me being who I am today, because now I'm able to share that with people and help them to not do the stupid stuff that I did and to not, you know, it, you know, show me your crowd. I will show you your future. And yeah. you know what, man, your crowd is who you hang with. That's a big thing. You know, yeah. and it's, you know, people hang with these people that are just so negative. And when you criticize, especially young people, you know, they don't stop loving themselves or you, they stop loving themselves. You know, mm -hmm. my grandmother always says, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, then don't say it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you see, that's, that's, that's old wisdom. That's old wisdom. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I, I love that. I love that phrase of yours. That phrase of show me your crowd and I'll show you your future. Show your future. That, yeah, that means so much. That means so much. Mm. Man. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. totally true. And uh, I, I mean, I'm glad that <laughs> there are a lot of people. Uh, there are a lot of motivational speakers nowadays. And some of them have the knowledge. Some of them have the experience. And yeah. just a few have the experience and the knowledge. So I'm glad to see that you're very three-dimensional in that in that approach. Thank you. Speaking Thank of you. three three dimensional, I mean, <clears throat> you were the best kicker in the circuit. Uh, Whenever I yeah. see your show reel, I mean your uh, uh, fight reel, and I know yeah. they even talked about this on the Joe Rogan podcast. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. You kicked yeah. from every angle. I mean, that Taekwondo must have been a great yeah. help in in the full contact days, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we worked on those kicks and worked on them and worked on them. And I wanted to get to the point where I could sit there and I could I would I could be able to kick and redirect my kick if he was able to block and bang, go in and bang and, and just but to do it effectively with power. And it was just a lot of work, man. And I attribute a lot of it to the people that worked with me, those guys that held pads for me, the people that pushed me, my trainers, the promoters, you know. Everyone that was a part of my, you know, my stable of, uh, you know, fight camp. So, uh, but it was a lot of work, man. What you, again, what you put in, you get out and, and it, it, nothing's impossible. If I can do it, shit, anybody can do it. And uh, it just takes work. And dude, you are the, so you're in Portugal right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you're the Joe Rogan of Portugal, brother. <laughs> I, I've watched, I've watched your interviews and stuff. 
You're very per- no, you, you're doing an amazing job. You're very personable. You got your shit together. You got charisma. Your your exercise videos are badass. I watched them last night, and I'm like, oh really? Oh, thank life. you I'm so like, much. Honey, honey. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, honey, you got to check this guy out. This guy is gonna do the podcast tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you're you're amazing, man. You're amazing. Oh, man. Uh, keep keep up the great work. But you, you've got you've got it. You've got that that charisma, and you're per- I'm telling you, and I've seen people do podcasts and stuff, and I'm like. Yeah, but you're great, man. So keep up the good oh, work, man. brother. Yeah, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I mean, coming from who's yeah. who's coming, I mean, yeah. it's 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 a, a total honor. Thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I w- I wanted to ask you something because I know that you, uh, besides the kicking, <laughs> so now talking about the physical skills and what got you into those, uh, what you got, what got you those trophies. That, by the way, your friend probably sold on eBay. He's probably uh, having, uh, he's probably has a Lamborghini right now. But he told you, <laughs> oh, we had to to throw them away. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we all heard that right. story. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to hunt the guy down after I get off the phone. <laughs> I, I heard of everything being sold on eBay. I heard this crazy oh, shit, story. I don't know if it's an urban myth of a Britney Spears, a Britney Spears fart inside a box. A fart get inside a box. I- so they oh sold it for like $15. $15 they sold that one. So, I mean, oh the crazy <laughs> shit people do on internet. So, you know. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This has opened up some doors to some crazy shit. No doubt, man. <laughs> <laughs> what if it is a Brit- Britney Spears fart? I mean, you, you open the box, it's like, it really is a Britney no, Spears shit. fart. Oh, 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 oh. It's like, I, oh, get it out. And you go. <laughs> <laughs> So it was a bargain. It was a bargain. It's really a bargain. Uh, Britney Spears fart. Fifteen bucks. <laughs> oh my god, that is a um, bargain. Fifteen bucks. <laughs> Fifteen bucks. Um, <laughs> plus shipping, obviously. But uh, <laughs> plus shipping. There. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I know that you love boxing as well. So yeah. uh, from love Taekwondo, boxing. when did you start to develop your boxing skills a little more? Uh, I started boxing in Kentucky, Terry O'Brien, uh, Shamrock Boxing Gym. And in 79, oh. I started training with him. And um, and then, you know, when I went to went to Atlanta, I started training with Asa Gordon, who was a boxer. Mm-hmm. And he had other boxers come in and, and sparring. And, uh, I, yeah, I actually, I mean, I love boxing. I love, you know, people say, what do you love more? Do you love kickboxing or do you love boxing? And I said, I actually like boxing better. I like it, you know, I like getting in there and, you know, boxing. It's just, there's something about it. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little more rugged. And it, it, kickboxing is more methodical. It's like, hey, you know, you, it's, it's, it's more of a uh, chess game than boxing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I love boxing. I've always loved boxing. Uh, you know, it, it's, I like getting in there and just slugging it out. <laughs> but, you know, it's not, it's not good for the brain. <laughs> no, no, good man. Brain. But but yeah. it's 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 really one of the most important things that I mean people when they're kickers I mean they they always like to maintain the distance and the long distance with the kicks but once yeah. you get in the medium or or the short range or the short yeah. distance I mean it's it's just mm. another whole level of pressure it's another whole level brother it's yes, like this, yes, it's like the same level. the same thing when you start grappling or trying to play a little bit with grappling yeah. or learning from friends it is so. Yeah against everything that you've been taught it's so counterintuitive yeah. that it's like oh my god i mean so i'm on the yeah. i'm on the bottom i'm not i'm not on top it's like wow jujitsu it's it's crazy yeah. as well so what was your what was your, your your base style that you started was kung fu wushu yeah kung fu wushu okay yeah i wushu. practiced oh. i practiced for 10 years i started when i was nine 10 yeah. years and then i i i started practicing kickboxing a little bit but by then, yeah. when I was like 18 and I started practicing kickboxing, I mean, I started the, doing a little bit of sparring as well. But I, I was kind of, uh, you know, I had this this weak mentality, let's say, let's say like this, uh, because I was thinking that my dream of being like a martial arts actor or, or being a stuntman yeah. that I got to become later on um yeah. I, I i i had a notion that my country is very small and that we have a little a very little uh, chance of of being on a i don't know a tv series or a, or a, yeah a, a movie so my dream of becoming like you guys was getting like yeah. farther and farther away but that's uh-huh. but that's the best way not to do anything you know i wasn't proactive i didn't do what you did and 
get everything together right. and, and just went on to to, to get it uh, uh, who now is my CERN coordinator his, his, his name is David Chan uh, he was okay. working out with me at the time and he, when he was 18 he went to the United States he went to California and he, yeah. he started he started studying there and he took uh, uh, he went to film school and since he was a martial artist as well he started working with a lot of people and started doing a lot yeah. of movies and he worked with Michael Ja White he worked with uh, Keith yeah. Cook yeah. as well he worked with Sc mm. uh, Scott Atkins you know he had a little bit of okay. a, yeah. a, a resume going on and after 8 years in the US he decided to come back to Portugal he's like my my angel and oh, i was wow. I, I was in a downslope. I I was doing nothing. I was uh, com completely addicted to, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, to, to marijuana and and uh, ashish yeah. and stuff. And uh, every day yeah. I was feeling sorry for myself, and I was I wasn't uh -huh. really working. I was doing a little bit of odd jobs to get some money every now and then. And one time I just see him, and I I had lost touch with him, and I just see him in a in a theater where I was uh, handing mm. out uh, um, keychains with my ex girlfriend. Yeah. We were handing out keychains as a you know as a promoter of the event. Emotional thing, a, yeah, right. emotional thing. So I saw him. I was like, oh yeah. David. He was like, oh Bruno. A big hug. And then he said, I, I yeah. came back to Portugal because I want to start a, a, a stunt team. And I was like, a stunt team oh, in what? Portugal? So you were in California and you came back to Portugal to came start to a Portugal. stunt team? <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? I mean, we're so small. Uh -oh. And he was like, oh, I think there's a market. And I was like, no, no, no. You you have to go back, brother. We're, we're, we're sinking here. Go back. And he was like, oh, I think there's oh a market. Gosh. You know what? Yeah. There was a fucking market. Oh. He called me. Oh, yeah. And I got hey. all that, you know, it was just like you when you're doing your motivational speaking. I, I, I just feel the same thing. I was like, I, I grabbed, yeah. I grabbed uh. everything that I had packed inside of me, like every emotion, every bad stuff that had, had occurred. Uh, my, my ex-girlfriend yeah. had broken up with me. So I was very much on the downslope and feeling, feeling sorry for myself. But then I was like, yeah. okay, I'm going to give it all in this first job that he gets me. And it was like, nice. a, a, a Portuguese TV show and I gave it all and from then oh. on until now it's been 12 years and I never stopped working as a stuntman good for you brother that's and, that's inspiring man that's and cool you, and you know what there is a market because in portugal since we Love have it. we have beach we have forests we are you know cheaper than most european countries a lot of european yeah. productions and american produ productions come to portugal to 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 film so it's like we're blessed oh. i mean we have a lot oh. of work at all time and uh, i'm very grateful oh yeah. man yeah i need to come out there and come out, i need I, I need to take a visit out there yeah, um, man. and what come out there and kill a few birds with one stone and do some motivational talks with kids. Oh, and that'd be same, great. You know, we we can do some. I don't know. Uh, you never know. You know, stranger things have happened. But uh, planting a seed. I'd love to come to Portugal, brother, and you, shoot something. Oh, that'd be cool. And then empower some kids at the same time. Let's go, that man. I mean, cool. you'll be treated yeah. like a king. You'll be treated like uh, a king. Nowadays, I can say I have the production value already to treat you like a king so i'm able to give it, back to my mentors and my idols then that oh, that makes me very brother. happy yeah yeah let's do it let's 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 put it out there man yeah. so about that yeah. alligator turnpike is it the uh, name alligator, alligator turnpike alley. alligator, alley. alligator alley. sorry, alligator sorry. It was my the english it was still... the florida that's right florida turnpike alligator the florida alley. turnpike yeah yeah, yeah. I, I never been to the u.s i gotta go i gotta go so yeah 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 uh you said that you left or you quit everything you quit the the, yep. the high life you know to go yep. do movies why movies yep were you already thinking uh, about a, doing movies well there was a promoter it's funny ever since i was like 11 years old me and my buddy i had a couple friends in school and we would get together we would write movie ideas and we would write synopsis this is 11 years old had no idea i wanted to be in the movie business we write, you know, write, create stories. And then I, my mom and dad bought me a movie projector with a record player and I would put sound, I had a tape recorder. I would put sound to movies, uh, silent movies, still no intention of being in the movie business. Mm -hmm. And then a promoter <clears throat> told me right before I got to the, became world champion, he says, um, he told me, he goes, golden boy, he goes, I'm gonna get you a shot at the world title. And I'm going to take you to Hollywood, California, make you a star. All you got to do is sign here. So I signed a contract with him. He gave me a brand new freaking car. I'm like, fuck yeah. 
And <laughs> I, I got, I got a shot at the world title, became world champion. And that idea of going to Hollywood kind of diminished because I was so into, if I, if I was training, I was training for a fight serious, but when I wasn't training, I was out partying and it was like crazy, but, um, it was uh, the Florida turnpike. It was, I needed to get out of Dodge and, and Jim Abernathy, the promoter, his, you know, that, that, uh, uh, talk he gave me about going to Hollywood popped into my head and I went, fuck it. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I said, where am I going to go? And I thought, I'll go to Hollywood. I'll try the movies. You know, Chuck Norris was big at the time and I'm going, shit, I can do this. And I, I, I went on my first, never been in an acting class. You know, it was like, instead of going to the boxing gym, I went to acting school and I, and my whole crowd changed, <clears throat> started teaching for one of Chuck Norris's studios to get some extra money. Saw a manager there. He said, you know, he was looking for new talent. And I said, well, I'm looking for an agent, and a manager. He goes, boom. So we signed, sent me on my first two auditions ever. And, uh, and I booked both two lead roles. And the first one was with Jet Li and the second one was Breathing Fire. Man. And I was like, wow. Okay. I mean, I don't think, I don't know if I would have got it if, you know, if it was strictly my acting, but when they said, okay, let's see your martial arts. And I'd stand in the center of the room and I would just fire off kicks, jump, spinning kicks, bang, flying, bang. And I would stay in one, one section and I would shadow box and bang and jump, spin and fly and bang. And they're like, Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you for coming in. And then boom, that's what really got me the booking. <laughs> and then wow. I said, I better get an acting class. Then I started taking some classes and stuff. <laughs> wow. Man. I mean, Jet Li on the first try. I mean, come on. Jet I know, Li I know, man. on the first try. Yeah. How was it working with Jet Li? Tell me everything. Uh, Jet, you, you know, he didn't speak. He didn't really speak English. And, okay. and you know, he... I'm sure he's a great guy now, but you know, he, he was, we both had egos. I mean, you okay. know, it was like the crew would be like, okay, uh, who do you think would win between you and Jet Li? And I'm going, well, fuck, I think I would win, but I'm sure he would think he would win. So, you know, and they're like, <laughs> we're going to take dads, man. And who think would beat you, you know? And uh, we never really hung out and talked because he couldn't, you know, he didn't speak English at the time, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, overall it was, you know, it was fine. He'd hit me a couple times. <laughs> And I'm going, okay, motherfucker, I'll get you back. <laughs> and boom, I hit him. It was, he smacked me in the face and I'm like, oh, oh no, it, it, it's good, it's good, it's good. And I'm like, boom, I tag him to the body. Wouldn't hit oh, him to the face man. because he's a star. Yeah, and I'm, of I'd, get, I'd, I'd hit him to the body with a little tap like, okay, man, we got to control this. Otherwise we're going to start blasting each other. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he was cool. Great. You know, I mean, we didn't really get to know each other, but uh, I enjoyed working with him. So I guess yeah. some of the Chinese people that we know from the movies, they, they get it done. Yeah. I mean, they, they go there, they they get yeah. it done. It's like, okay, hello and goodbye. Right. And they just do it yeah, yeah. and get out. Yeah. The, 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 the stunt guys were amazing though. I got along great with those guys. Those guys were freaking awesome, man. And they're crazy. They're just balls out. Crazy. Badasses. Was it, was it the Corey Yun crew? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, it was uh, okay. breathing fire or no, no, uh, not breathing fire. I think it uh, uh, the master. I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, shit. I God, that was a long time ago, man. Yeah, Whoa. but it's, it's, since yeah, it's that, uh, yeah. it's it's a lot of Hong Kong style or Chinese style fights, mm. so you really yeah. you really got the the best out of the martial arts types type of fighting in, in yep. at the at the first try i mean both movies yeah. have a, a chinese speed they're not really a, yeah. american style fighting so how did exactly. you uh, so how did you uh, cope with you know we, we always get this we a lot of people uh, we work as stuntmen so a lot of people say oh okay i'm a, I'm a martial arts champion i know judo i know uh, taekwondo i know kickboxing I'm, yeah. a, I'm a national champion i'm whatnot but sometimes they're the worst people to work with when it comes to fight choreography yeah. because they really yeah. want to yeah. hit their i mean yeah. their, their hooks are like this it, it are not they're yeah. not like this they're not ample yeah. you know so was it exactly. a, was it a stretch for you to learn how to not hit or to to keep that uh distance and to do a little bit more yeah. flourishy, flourishy yeah my my control was pretty damn good i mean mm. i had really good control and, and that i attribute that to point karate but uh you know it was funny chewy hark directed the uh the masters with jet Li, and uh, you know we were we were going through the fight scenes and uh and i was you know you know they were trying to teach me some kung fu and i you know and, and chewy said 
uh, he goes, just let this be your own. Take this and make it your own. And then I went, oh, okay, I get it. So they were letting me, you know, even though it wasn't perfect Kung Fu, shit, it was my Kung Fu. And they were really, you know, they were, it, they were great to work with. They'd show me some shit and then I'd kind of add a little bit of flair to it, add a little bit of a different kind of a swooping motion and stuff. And yeah, you know, it looked good. <laughs> I, Man, I hope it looked good. That fight yeah, on top but, of the building, that, it was crazy. That fight on top yeah. of the building. I mean, I, I love that. I love that. I love the fight scenes on that movie. Yeah. I love the fight scenes. Yeah, that was a that was a that was a great fight scene. That was so much fun. Yeah, that was great. Yen Wa, uh, which I Yen think, Wa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yen Wa. Oh my god, that guy. Bruce he, Lee's stuntman. Guess, yes. <laughs> I, I was 28 or 29 at the time. Oh, my God. We did a fight scene. It took us two weeks, and we just went through this whole – it was the uh, – uh, it was his it was his shop in the movie. Yeah. And I remember throwing a front kick. He was standing against the wall. I threw a front kick. He evaded the front kick, stepped to the side, and I was supposed to come up and then throw a back fist. Yeah. And, man, I went up, and I swung that back fist – hard and it hit him solid and it went boom and i went oh fuck oh young i'm so sorry sir and he goes and he just stood there and everybody's like oh my god i hit him so hard and he just went okay it's okay and i was like wow that was the most impressive thing i've ever seen in any film i ever did because <laughs> i i mean i i just i was in the air and swung that back fist i hit him so hard and he just shook it off i was Man. blown away everyone was like and he was like and he just composed himself and then he went okay okay it's wow. okay it's okay and i was like dude you're my hero bro that was freaking awesome and those then he the just continued like it was nothing. It was like, it was crazy. He was so, that's why those guys are freaking tough, man. They're so fucking that tough. The Chinese man. crew, yeah. those guys, yeah, they're fucking tough as shit. They, um, oh, they can take it, man. I've seen them be thrown out of windows and land on their neck. And I'm going, oh my God. One guy stunt doubled for him. I did most of my stuff, but there was some stuff that I had to jump. One, a Jeep was driving and, a, and my character in One Man Army in the Philippines uh, I jumped on the Jeep and they said, Yuri, you want to do that? And I said, ah, moving Jeep, uh, 15 feet up. I don't think so. Sorry guys. Uh, this one I won't do. They had a stunt double. The stunt double jumped off his chin, hit the, hit the, um, uh, the, uh, what is it? The, the windshield, yeah, the windshield. busted his whole chin, man. Stitches. And, oh, I was like, oh my God, you guys are. And he's like, I'm good. I'm good. Just take me to the hospital. Let's stitch this up so I can get back to work. Rock stars, man. These guys are freaking rock stars. Man, it's crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. crazy. Yeah. Well, later on, uh, you started working as a stuntman yourself because of yep. uh, Andy and Vic yeah. Armstrong, right? Andy and Vic Armstrong and Jesse Johnson, their nephew. Their nephew, Jesse Johnson, who is a director, has put me in about, I don't know, about six or seven movies. Vic and Andy are responsible for me being in all my stunt gigs. And I've done about 15 and uh, Jesse Johnson introduced me to Vic Armstrong, uh, Vic and Andy actually, on um, uh, Charlie's Angels. And Vic yeah. saw my my fight, my highlight reel, you know, the one on Joe Rogan. He saw my yeah. highlight reel and he's like, let me meet this guy. And I went in and Vic was like, he says, oh man, I'm a big fan. And, you know, I love your work as a kickboxer. I've seen some of your fights and man, that, that reel is pretty amazing. And then he cast me six weeks on uh, Charlie's Angels. And then every time they had a stunt gig... You know, I mean, those two guys and Jesse are, I love, that's, they're part of my family now. When we have parties up here in LA, uh, I'll invite them. If they're in town, they usually come. But yeah. uh, I, Vic and Andy Armstrong, brother, they're legends. They're like freaking rock star legends all to hell and back. I read love those Vic, guys. I, I read Vic Armstrong's book and it's crazy, man. The stuff he oh, went I through in, read, in the yeah. beginnings of being a stuntman in the Indiana mm. Jones and the, the Rambos. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Those guys are so yeah, tough, he, so tough. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I, I know you had a great fight with Drew Barrymore. <laughs> oh, God. Ah! That, that was, Jerry, that was Jerry, a, yeah, that was, you went on and hit Drew Barrymore. Come on, man. It was, <laughs> you it don't was, do it, that. The, the, control, the control was so... It was like just a touch. 
like on the, the nose with a punch. And uh, she's like, ah, oh my God, oh my God. Ah, ah. And I was like, what the fuck? Stunt guys are coming behind me going, dude, you're never going to work again. And I was like, I did. And, and she's sitting in a chair going, ah. and everybody's around her. They're like, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's like, ah. and she, we called eyes and she's like, ah. oh, oh, and she realized nothing happened. It was just a, it was a touch. And she's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. No, no, he didn't hit me. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. And I was like, Oh my God. And the guy comes up, this one of the stunt guys comes up and he goes, dude, you are so freaking lucky. <laughs> I was like, and I told, and I told Vic and Andy, I'm like, I didn't touch her, man. I said, I didn't touch her. I said, that was like perfect control. They said, yeah, no, she's, you know, she can, you know, she, no, she's all right now. And, but yeah, it was funny. I would, yeah, luckily I didn't break her nose. My God, can you imagine? I, I would have been blackballed. Oh wow. God. What, what was the worst day for you ever on set? Did anything happen oh. that it was like, oh, my God, I, you know, that day in which you get home and you feel like it's like, I'm, I'm oh. not I'm not good enough for this. You know, sometimes I feel like that, you know, you, even after 12 years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's there's a few times. You know what? I it's like interviews. Oh, man, I was telling my wife, I said, I don't like doing podcasts and interviews, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually I mean, you know, having a conversation. Yeah. You know, I don't like talk, you know, saying the whole and just keep going on and on and telling my story. And it's like, I love yeah. how we're conversing, man, back and forth. I love this. This is, it makes it fun and enjoyable, you know? And I would doubt myself and I would look back and go, oh God, did I say that? Or, oh, and, and we are our own worst enemies and our biggest competition, I believe any, everyone is ourselves. And there is a lot, and I feel for you, I, you know, when you said, you know, you do it as well. There's times where I get off a set. I mean, a time, yeah, where I sit there and you, you know, you forget the lines. You're like, fuck. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 I beat myself up. Uh, any times where there's where I really it was a bad day, nothing really comes to mind. But there are times in, in that I would look back and go, oh god, fuck, I, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> shit. Yeah, uh, uh, and then. I don't know. I don't do it as much now because I've learned to, I'm really working on controlling the awareness where awareness goes in my mind because where awareness goes, energy flows. And if I start pinpointing, you know, and, and picking apart what I did or what I didn't do. And I, I just say, boom, back off, let it go, let it go, let it go. And, and, uh, and then I start thinking of everything I'm grateful for. But, um, yeah, I mean, we all beat ourselves up and, and, you know, it's, I mean, we do it, you know, it's, it's, we got to get over it, but yeah. any certain time I've went, fuck, I don't know, man, I don't know. Nothing comes to mind, but there are times in other, in, in the films where I, they, you know, my characters or something I look and I go, uh, yeah. uh <laughs> I don't like watching, my, I don't like watching myself sometimes, <laughs> you know? I, what, I stop. I try to stop judging myself. Yeah. Uh, but you started motivational speaking uh, in in the seventies, actually, right? Yeah, uh, my when I was fifteen. When I was fifteen years old, I did my first. Mo when I became a black belt, I did my first motivational talk in front of Highlands High School in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, man. And I had people coming up to me, kids coming up to me that were my age and even older, going. Dude, man, you inspired me, man. I, I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus on, you know, I'm gonna try to be good at something. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be martial arts. It just has to be something. We're all, we all are gifted. We got so many gifts and talents, and we go to our graves. So many people goes to goes to their graves without discovering half of or a smidgen of what they're great at. But yeah, so I started doing that, and then when I went to Atlanta, I uh, started volunteering and doing working with athletes and entertainers for kids. I started going to Martin Luther King Jr. Hosp Children's Hospital. And uh, when I got to California, I started, you know, taking a little more seriously. And then as of about probably five years ago, I, I started looking at it as a business. And now I do, you know, talks around the U.S. and Canada. and I get paid pretty good money. And, uh, you know, but it's not about the money. And there are some organ organizations that I do work with and I don't, you uh, know, Jerry, charge sorry, them. If, sorry if, to if, interrupt if, you. I just yeah. have to plug my, no my computer because I, I guess it's uh, running out okay. of battery. Wait. Okay. Oh. Ah. oh my oh god. Love your action figures, man. Nice setup. Oh 
man. Big. I almost had a heart attack. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah worries, my man. computer my computer was like okay it's it's disconnecting it's 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 a seven percent the charge uh. and i was like oh no no <laughs> oh sorry so so you were saying it's it, no. yeah it's not it's not about the money it's about the feeling that you get afterwards right yeah yeah you know what i i, I believe we're all put on this planet to to love love one another and love ourselves loving ourselves is number one we got to give We've got to give back. We got to grow, learn, and grow. That's what we're here. We're here to live, to love, to learn, to grow, and give back. And if we just focus on those things, man, life would be so much better for everyone and the world around us. And that's, you know, the, uh, my purpose in life is to empower people, empower young people to become the best version of themselves. And the uh, acting and I'm producing now, I mean, that's all icing on the cake, man. That's like, Yes. And the, and the more that I get out there and get on TV and get into the movies, you know, the kids go, whoa, okay. You know, shit, man, that guy did it. Hey, if he yeah. can do it, I can do it. Whether it's becoming a world champion, an actor, or, you know, a, a doctor or lawyer, if, you know, shit, anybody can do it. And the sooner you start, the, you know, the, the better. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just grateful that I found my purpose and my purpose is, you know, empowering young people to be the best version of themselves. And uh, yeah, that's what it's about, man. That's man. what life's about. Giving back, freaking yeah. giving back, paying it forward, man. Yeah. Man, Pretty. there's something about you. Whenever you talk, I, I feel like I want to go work out or something. I want to, I want to go oh. do something <laughs> other than sitting around your, on my when ass. When I was watching your exercise <laughs> videos, man, I was like, shit. Yeah. Yes, I want to train. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Did you see it on the yeah, Portuguese man. or the English channel? Because the Portuguese, you would not understand uh, what I was saying. No, no, no. Well, I was on the Portuguese channel. I'm like, what the fuck is he saying? <laughs> it all sounded, yeah, it all sounded like Spanish porn, right? Spanish porn. Yeah, rico, rico. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But the CrossFit shit, man, was badass. Yeah, yeah. The push-ups and stuff. Yeah, the, it, the stuff you did was really cool. It was very, very cool. Yeah, A lot of different shit in there. I saw that I haven't seen before. Yeah, yeah I'm always trying to to mix. You know, as a stuntman, I feel like we should be ready for everything in in a certain way. So yep. we should be ready to yep. not only lift weights, but uh, be able to jump, yep. be able to sprint, be able to jog, yep. be able to. You know, you got to have yep. a lot of a lot of stuff. What's a dip? What's yep. a typical day for you nowadays in terms of? Uh, um, what time do you get up? What time do you go to bed? I mean, uh, do you have any sort of rituals uh, to work out? Yes, some routine. Yeah, first, well, I got back into the you you know Wim Hof, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. The, yeah. 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 So I got from about a week ago. I got back into um, the uh, Wim Hof method, and, and first thing I do every morning when I get up, uh, you know, my, my times every day is different because it all depends on where I'm at. Like right now, I'm in Los Angeles. We're leaving to go back to Vancouver on Monday. Uh, Vancouver life is a lot different than Los Angeles life. Um, everything's more, you know, closer together in Vancouver, whereas LA, everything's spread out. And uh, when you meet people, you got to go, you know, and drive for you know, 30 minutes and stuff. Yeah. But uh, every morning before, every morning when I wake up, and I asked, I told my wife, I said, honey, are you cool with me doing these breathing exercises when I get out of bed? Because I got to do these first thing. I'll do the Wim Hof, you know, the <gasps> the breathing and I'll time myself with the holding my breath. And then uh, and then I'll meditate. I'll put my Bose headphones on, set my timer for anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes and I'll meditate. And then after that, I do my, um, uh, what is it? My uh, uh, I'll do a glass of water with uh, t uh, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I do that every morning to okay. wake up my di digestive system. And then I do seven of these every morning. And then um, I'll go to the gym and then do my... Sorry for, sorry for, inter yeah. for interrupting. What type and of workout do you do nowadays? Is it uh, the conditioning with weights, uh, body weight? What do you do? Weights. Yeah, it's it, it's weights. You know, I'm trying to get into some new stuff with body weight, you know, using my own body weight, you know, body weight exercises. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave me some good ideas on some stuff to do too when I saw your shit. Uh, oh, cool, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's you know I do shadow boxing for cardio. I do I do funky boxing, which is I'll find a song with a certain pace of of beats. Boom 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 boom, and I will punch for thirty minutes in shadow box, and I will try to get my feet and hands and rhythm and punching everything in tune to the rhythm of every single beat of every song that plays, and it's and I. 
I measured it and it comes out, if I do a solid nonstop for 30 minutes, it comes out to be close to 10,000, 11, 12,000 punches. Wow. And it's like, and I'm going, and it's not full out all punching. It's trying to hit and punch and step with my breathing going in slow and out slow. So I've got this, it's again, this is a brain training thing. So I'm breathing in and out. My punches are, are in tune with every beat of the songs. My feet are in step doing one thing. My punches are doing another thing, but everything's in rhythm with the rhythm of the songs. And I've got certain music, certain songs. Sometimes it's really fast. Sometimes it's, you know, it's slower, but everything is in t- tune. And it's, that's my cardio that I do. And I like it because it's just, it gets me into a focused rhythm where I'm not thinking of anything else. And I'm just like, bang, 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 bang. And, and just my feet are moving. My hands are moving. And, uh, you know, and then I'll come home and uh, eat and break my fast. I do intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. I, uh, mm-hmm. I've been doing intermittent fasting for a while. I love intermittent fasting. I'll eat 16 hours and then break a fast with a shake and then uh, do some writing or, you know, go to an audition or something. But, you know, every, every day is pretty, pretty much different. And I've been doing uh, doing this uh, this course by Don Dupont. Have you ever heard of Don Dupont? No, Ooh, I haven't. Give him a plug. Don Dupont. He's Don a Dupani. he's a Hindu monk. Don Dupont. Uh, he's a Hindu monk, and he's got this course out, Unwavering Focus, and an mm-hmm. introduction to meditation, which I that came with it. But Unwavering Focus, and he talks about the mind. And I figure. If anyone knows anything about mastering our thoughts in the mind, it would be a monk, right? <laughs> so, but it's, you know, and I, and I do this course and, uh, and I practice the, the uh, awareness and, and it's really amazing how, when you think of, 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 when you get angry, you know, he says that when you get angry, you're not angry. You're just, your, your awareness is in that angry part of the mind. And you have to think of like the, the, we are pure awareness and if you get a chance, Google him. I'm telling you, this freaking guy's amazing. I will. Your awareness. I will. And you, you you think of your mind has different compartments. You've got angry. You've got happy. You've got joy. You've got compassion. All these different parts of the mind. And then we are pure awareness. So think of awareness as a, as a glowing orb. And it's just, it goes to wherever we want our attention to go. So where energy, where awareness goes, energy flows. Energy flows. And I've been, and I've been working on this in... It's really cool, you know. You know, you go home and family and stuff, and you got certain things. I didn't let things get to me like I would usually let it get to me, and I'm going, oh man! It just took my focus and my awareness to a whole new level. And my meditation in the past four or five days has. I told my wife, I said, man, my meditation just jacked up to a whole new level, and I think I attribute it to. To the uh, to this course that I'm taking from Don Dupani, it's amazing. Wow! Yeah, man. I mean monks, man, they know their shit. They they are the master. <laughs> of, yeah, and <laughs> I mean, I mean, he talks about affirmation. Do you do you do affirmations? No, no, I don't. I would. I, would I asked people, say, you do affirmations? Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, I do affirmations. I'm like, how do you do affirmations? They say, oh well, I just I'm in the shower and I say, I am confident. I'm Don Dupani, monks have mala beads. Mala beads have 108 beads for a lot of different reasons. But when they do affirmations, they pick an affirmation. Let's say, I am confident. And you say it 108 times. Say it 108 times. It embeds it into your subconscious mind. Boom. Subconscious mind does, doesn't know what's real and not real. It embeds it into your mind. Now, to jack it up, you add visualization to it. And to jack it up even more, you put emotion to whatever you're trying to manifest. And, oh, you pick an affirmation, man. You say it 108 times with feeling and emotion and visualization. Oh, what you think you become, Buddha. It's It works. It, the shit works, man. It's it's pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I got to try. I, I guess... I guess I'm yep. coming to to a point in my life where I can, you know, I, I I'm better each year. I'm better at looking at the helicopter view of it all. You know, mm. you yeah, know, the, yeah, the late yeah. I, I'm I'm 35 right now, and the late 20s were okay. were a mess. I was full of everything, full of testosterone, and you yeah. know, I was I I, I, there, I, yeah. I I can feel a little bit of what you were saying, uh, even though I wasn't mm-hmm. you know famous like you, and I wasn't the golden yeah. boy, obviously. But yeah. uh, you know, I had a little bit of that here, and uh, even though it's a smaller scale, but I I felt it. I felt that 
I felt that um, capability of, of of ruining myself in the long run. So I I, yes. I guess I guess everything came to 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 a circle. I mean the the circle uh, was 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 kind of uh, closed right now. But uh, I I guess right mm -hmm. now I'm 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 starting to lean more towards you know gratification and spirituality. Yeah. You know I, I mean yeah. I'm, it's it's a great place in my life right now to answer your question. Mm -hmm. It's a great place in my life to start yeah um, to start uh, connecting with with that type of uh, of, um, mm -hmm. of techniques of techniques yeah so yeah. jerry i i, I can't Gratitude. thank you i can't thank you enough for this yeah. i mean you oh, you're you're giving yeah. us tools not just talking about your life but this is what i wanted from this podcast obviously is to always yeah. to make sure that the listeners or the viewers always get tools for their everyday life you just yes. gave me a lot of tools and one of the most uh, one of the tools that i'm actually gonna try i mean already Ready tomorrow uh, besides yeah. the affirmations obviously it's gonna be that yeah. what did you call it the 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 boxing the shadow boxing uh, the, the, funk, the, the, the funk boxing? funky boxing I call funky, it. Bo funky, funky boxing. boxing that's yeah, great man. funky that boxing it's it's cool but you, you got to challenge yourself and, and and just try to hit on every beat bang 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 whatever that whatever the beat the rhythm is to the music and find different rhythms and yeah. don't just punch just to be punching find that rhythm and man yeah. it's 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 a cool because you're in sync with the music and that music man drives you faster yeah. the rhythm faster the punching and try to do it with where everything is just where your 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 shoulders are just bang just kind of you know they're bouncing it's a it's a great exercise i've been doing it for years and i freaking love it yeah and it looks it's... cool and you feel cool and it's just you're in sync you're in rhythm you're in harmony and your body everything is working together and you're just like one with ah, everything it's it's Freaking cool! I love Cause it because that's a love great it, way to do skill work, and a lot of people don't like shadow boxing because they're they ran out of ideas yes. or imagination. Yes. So that would be a great idea for you to get in tune with the music, get in tune with what you're doing, and even if it sounds yep. a little silly the first time you hear it, it's like it's yep. actually like okay, that's a way of you doing the shadow boxing without thinking of anything else, and you know being yep. just in touch with yourself and the music, and nobody else can step yep. into your into your world, and it, you you can actually exactly. get a lot of work done and burn a lot of calories with that so i, I a lot that, of that was a great and, tip and, and it, yeah and it's a it's good brain training because you've got to be in sync your yeah. feet's got to be in sync your punch has got to be in sync and then you keep your breathing your breathing's doing one thing your hands doing something else your knees are doing your feet are doing something and your mind is like bang in tune to what you're doing it's it's a great exercise Jerry, yeah. I'm just going to ask you for one last tip, one last life tip for yeah. everybody coming out of one of my wow. favorite motivational speakers. So you got it's it's your time, man. Say say it to, to our listeners, to our audience, Portugal, yeah. Brazil, United States, your, whatever. Yes. Love you guys there. Get out of your comfort zone on a regular basis. Get out of your comfort zone and, and, and discover new things about yourself. Communicate with yourself writing through writing in a journal. Work on meditation. Google it, you know, figure it out. Silent meditation, in my opinion, is the best. But getting out of your comfort zone on a steady basis is the best advice I can give anyone. Because that's where you grow. I mean, you know, they say the comfort zone can be a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. So that's get out of your comfort zone. And most importantly, be freaking kind. Be kind. Every time that you sit... Man, I believe in karma. I believe in karma. Be kind. We need we need more kindness and compassion in the world. Yeah. Get out of your yeah. comfort zone. Be kind. Yes. And do it often. Huh. Even silent prayers, man. You're walking down the street. You're walking down the street. You see somebody, you know, just, I don't you know. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a religious guy. I'm a spiritual guy. Mm -hmm. Just give silent blessing, mm -hmm. silent prayers, man. It, it, it really does help. It's the energy. We're all mm -hmm. just one big ball of energy, you know? Keep that energy flowing positive, man. Keep working on yourself, people, and just, you know, grow. Grow and give. Grow and give. Grow and give. You know? Yeah. And I can't wait to come to Portugal, man. We're going to inspire some kids. Yeah, and let's go, shit. man. We're going to make a movie. Yeah, yes. well, let's make a movie, man. <laughs> the Return yeah. of the Ninja. Yeah, have you ever, the... <laughs> been... There you go. Have yeah. you ever, you ever been to Vancouver? No, never. You've no. never been to the States? Never Dude. been to the States, yeah. yeah. Well, well, if you ever come to LA, hook me up, you know, let me know. And uh, sure, if man. I'm in LA or you come, come to Vancouver, let me know. And 
yeah, man, we'll uh, we'll hang and and who knows, man? Maybe we can see if we can get you something. Definitely, a lot of there's a lot of work in Vancouver. A lot of good stuff in Vancouver. Got some good peeps that I can introduce you to. Oh, cool, yeah, man. a lot of work in Vancouver, man. I can't thank yeah. you enough, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, man. wonderful tips and yeah. have a great day. And thank, thank you, you so much for the energy, thank brother. <laughs> Godspeed, my man. It was lovely seeing you. All right. See you. <laughs> All right, thanks, All man. Right, thanks, man. Have a good thanks. one. Bye. Take have care. Have a good one. because you overuse it. Were you a hard gainer for the legs? You were talking about how it was difficult for you. Is it because you're too tall uh, and the yeah. range of motion is more difficult? Yeah, when you're taller, everything takes a lot of work to bulk up. It's really bizarre, you know? You have to put a lot of effort into it.